So good afternoon. Uh, we are going to be showing you one uh, live case of photodynamic therapy. Uh, so you have got some basic idea that you need a photosensitizer dye and you need a laser with an appropriate or a light source with an appropriate wavelength. And uh, I think sir will explain how it actually works, your type 1 reaction, type 2 reaction and what is going to happen. So what we are going to do is here is we are just going to show you in a patient with periodontitis for whom non-surgical therapy has been already completed and uh, we are going to show in an area where there is just horizontal bone loss. So generally a photodynamic therapy is indicated for areas with as an adjunct to non-surgical periodontal therapy. That means as an adjunct to scaling and root planing. When you have remaining pockets of around 5 mm with horizontal bone loss, you can do a photodynamic therapy and if it doesn't resolve then you can go for a surgical therapy also. But generally if you see now in the third quadrant, you have horizontal bone loss which is only around the cervical third. So these kind of situations you may not really need to open a flap. You can as well do a photodynamic therapy and get the pocket under check. In seven, yes, because furcation involvement, furcation involvement is there, you may need a flap, but for now we are going to do a demonstration in this particular third quadrant. So what are the things that we are going to use for this is the photosensitizer dye. So photosensitizer dye has been prepared. This is a methylene blue dye which is being used. And the concentration what has been prepared is a point five percentage actually 0 0.05 percentage sorry 0 0.05 percentage right so you can use 0 0.1 percentage or 0 0.05 percentage for the uh, as per the literature you can use either of these two concentrations for photodynamic therapy so you have the dye and you have some saline here and then you have the uh, triple wavelength laser which is the we are using the p on s1 here so you have 980, 450 and 660, 650. 650 is more ideal for photodynamic therapy. And uh, photodynamic therapy is one of the, we can say the cold laser applications. So you don't generate heat in this. So the idea here is to use a milliwatt uh, power. You don't use a power in the watts. So generally the cold laser applications will be running between five milliwatt to 500 milliwatts. That means you can use it with a regular laser with which you already have, you can go lowest is 0.1 watt. Okay, that is your 100 milliwatt. But in this particular laser, suppose you have a 980 or a 940 or an 810, the least you will be able to go is 0.1. This is same as 100 milliwatts. But if you have a machine like this where you have an option of 650 or 660, you can see that there are options available where you can even reduce a little bit more. So again, as per literature, you can use 75 or you can use 100 milliwatts for the doing the photodynamic therapy. But remember, it is in milliwatts, it's not in watts, okay? And we are using a continuous wave mode of operation. So you're using 100 milliwatts, continuous wave mode of operation. And there's also a timer in this, which makes our life easy because otherwise you'll have to keep the time and see whether the duration of irradiation in the pocket, normally for a given tooth, you can do it as 30 seconds buckle, 30 seconds lingual, or you can do as 15, 15, 15, 15. That means 15 buckle, 15 mesial, 15 lingual, and 15 distal. So 15 seconds per uh, site, okay? Four sites around the two. Total maximum allowed is 60 seconds, okay? So I've just set it at 30 seconds so that when I am working on the patient, I don't need to look at the time. The machine will go into a standby as soon as the 30 second time is over. So we are using a low power of 100 milliwatt continuous wave and we have preset it to 30 seconds when we are doing the procedure. So next is the steps in the procedure uh, before I show you the patient. So the steps in the procedure will be first step we will be taking the uh, dye since the preparation has already been done we will be taking the dye and we will be injecting it subgingivally. Once we have injected it subgingivally there's something called as binding time. So you have to wait for one minute, which is the binding time. So what is this binding time means? The time taken by the dye to bind to, to the, bind to the subgingival bacteria present in the subgingival area, in the periodontal pocket area, okay? So once that one minute binding time is over, then you'll flush out the excess dye. So you'll take normal saline and you'll irrigate subgingivally and flush out all the excess dye from the pocket area. Once the dye has been flushed out completely, that is when you will introduce the laser into the subgingival area. 
I know there are two techniques of doing this irradiation. Sir, can you show here? So there are two techniques. One technique is the intracellular technique. If you are doing the intracellular technique, especially if you are using your 980 or 940 or 810, 810 has a different resin dye, okay? We don't use methylene blue, we use indocyanin green. So, but you have to use the tip. If you are using intracellular, you have to use your tip here. So this is the regular tip. Yesterday you would have worked with this tip, right? So this tip will be used for the irradiation also. Whereas extracellular method of irradiation will involve a handpiece like this, which has a broader working area, and which will irradiate from outside the gingiva into the sulcus area. It will irradiate from outside the gingiva into the sulcus area. So both the methods of irradiation can be done depending on what you have with you in your mission and at that uh, patient time. So this is for your PDT. Uh, so we'll be starting off with uh, showing you the patient as such, okay? So clinically, we'll just examine the patient and then we'll show you each step as we go ahead with the procedure. So you have some 5mm pockets here. I don't know whether you're able to see the marking of the probe there. Madam, can you more close chain? Can you more close chain, please? Can you close chain? Close chain. Can you close chain? Can you close Yes, sir, visible? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. So we'll start off with the first step, which is going to be the injection of the dye. You have to give me some visibility, not light. So what we are doing is we are just placing it at the entrance to the pocket and just gently irrigating here. Now methylene blue is commercially available medical grade which can actually be in uh, which is used for intravenous injection also. Suction please. So if you are trying to use methylene blue please. Okay. Okay, madam. Please try to buy the medical grade methylene blue, which is available commercially and use that. Suction Mingad, madam. Now we wait for a binding time of one minute. Suction. We're going to wait for one minute and then we're going to start. So now one minute is over. So we're going to flush out the excess dye. And now it's lawful. Hold, hold. hold.
So we, we are going to start with the lasing now. So we just from standby, we are going to ready. Just a reminder, we are using 100 milliwatt continuous wave, and we have preset it for 30 seconds. So all I'll be doing is I'll be just placing this on the gingiva for 30 seconds, the labial, and then in the lingual. Okay. Can you see this is a visible laser, okay? So it's a red color beam. 650 is a red color, so you can actually see the red color light there. I don't relax, Chandy. You can see the machine is, you can hear the machine counting down. So 30 seconds is up, so the machine is gone to standby. Now again, I'm going to start for the lingual. Yes, you can do for the next truth. Come and sit, you can do. Now we are just going to change the tip from an extra oral uh, tip to the intra oral tip and now we are just going to put it into the sulcus and do the same kind of a procedure for one more tooth. So basically it's the same procedure, all you do is you have to insert it subgingivally, insert it subgingivally into a pocket of 5mm, I think measles of 6 should be okay. Measles of six, yeah, I'll tell you once. Yes? yes. So it's gone in subgingivally there. Yes, I activate that. But, uh, you focus here. So you can see the no wait, 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 wait. Put the thing inside. Yes. Now you can see that it is gone in subgingival. You can see the red light from inside. Yes, start. Run it in the sulcus. Measles to distal. Slowly, gently, yeah. Repeat again, go back. 30 seconds, it should run. 
when you go to the mesial distal slightly angulate so that it goes into the so when you run in the mesial and distal we will just angulate so that it goes into the interproximal also otherwise you can do intracircular separately for buccal mesial distal and lingual but you keep 15 seconds each so that's the other way of doing it now we will do the same thing for the lingual This we may not be able to see, but you can see the light alone moving there. Move gently. So one thing you should note is that we didn't initiate the tip when we started working within the sulcus also. Okay, because here you want a laser to be transmitting to the full depth of the pocket. So when you transmit to the full depth of the pocket, you will be able to target all the bacteria which have been binded with the dye. So that is uh, one of the indications. Somebody was asking. Somebody was asking yesterday, other than photobiomodulation and root canal disinfection, is there any other procedure where? we don't do initiation. Now this is one type of procedure where you don't do initiation, okay? Because you want the laser to transmit to the bottom of the sulcus, right? So you straight away start with uh, without initiation and do the irradiation with the time settings and the power settings what we have discussed now. So with this we complete the procedure. After this we will just be doing a subgenital irrigation and you can send the patient. If you want to do, you can do one round of scaling just to remove the dye alone and then you can send the patient. So this is what is a non-surgical therapy is a cold laser because we use less than 0.5 watts okay less than 500 milliwatts basically so this is a photodynamic therapy thank you everyone